look out for that. Um, because Morgan's poems are beautiful and playful and they're dynamic and uproarious and swaggering and they are sad and they're honest and they're confrontational in the best, most necessary way possible, I think. So when she says things like, please know seven birds have fallen dead at my feet right out of the sky, you kind of believe her because <laughs> at this point it feels like there's nothing that this poet can't do and she has this authority about her. You know, follow her anywhere, like, follow her into war. But then she'll also tell you, if you really want to know, I dropped a carrot on the floor making soup, tripping over a snuggy covered in cigarette ash. Or I know a little something about pissing in public, but nothing about loving. Or I am everybody consume, consuming, still very small and afraid to answer the phone. And then you're even more off, awestruck because um, I'm not going to say that Morgan Parker is you know, the resident Socrates of the night. The only wisdom is in knowing that you know nothing. Or in Morgan's words, Proverbs, hush up, you don't give a damn. I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to make a comparison between Morgan and fucking Socrates. But, <laughs> no, I just did So, Morgan Parker, wise and hilarious Morgan Parker. <laughs> like hearing those things like I guess I did say that and I guess I did have a snuggy snuggy covered in cigarette ash. Cool. Um, all right. I'm going to do this and I'm like so curious <laughs> to hear what's going to happen. I feel like I gave you really random stuff. Great. Okay. Let's, let's do it. Have him be a Xanax. When people say, how are you? I say, good. It is a rule no one can answer crying in the gap by my therapist's office. Or I'm still angry with my parents for traumatizing me through organized sports. Dangerous and satisfying body of water. I can almost remember heaven. Or still a woman slaughtered for wonder. Or unfortunately misplaced grip. I'm not doing a good job waiting. When I get to heaven, I'm gonna wear my good bra so no one can stay mad at me. I won't have any feelings to hurt, just cheeseburgers on cheeseburgers, on deep colored slumber, just men offering their golden bodies, and I will take the offering on my tongue, and it will not be a vault, and someone will not invade me, and I will kneel to pray, and I will address the prayer to myself, and I will be allowed. This is kind of new. Hot and top Venus. I wish my pussy could live in a different shape and get some goddamn respect. <laughs> Should I thank you? Business is booming, and I am not loved the way I want to be. I am an elastic winter. Sympathy and shock, addictive decoration. In the sunlight, my captors drink African hibiscus. They tell me I look regal bearing fruit. I am technically nothing human. I will never be a woman. Somewhere in my memory, I was held by a man who said I deserved it. Now I understand. No one worries about me because I am getting paid. I am here to show you who you are, to cradle your large skulls and remind you, you are perfect. Mother America, unleash your sons. Everything beautiful you own. Slouching toward Beyonce. <laughs> Who reads her horoscope in secret and bathes her loose strings in holy watercolor, cucumbers over the temple. Her body is like mine, it is filled with holes. It starts black and stays black. I keep thinking the only city left is outer space. 
where we lived before we had tongues. Things don't fall apart, they find new homes. Down here, there's a thing called skin. I keep mine clean. There are things called medication and days. They are hard to believe. I am tired, so I wife myself. Down here, the boys are theoretical. I shrink their hearts. I say spells because I'm magic. Fire is another word for absolute sunset on a high cliff. I am never afraid to jump. Oh, Beyonce. I love you. Your fragments like a map. I think I am addicted. You soaked blue, you trouble in my sight. The beast has come at last, hair of a cattail and legs of a palm. The truth like a bowl of seeds. The secret album, midnight. Oh, vessel of womanhood, I am loosed upon the world with dust and filed nails. All my life I turn water into wine. This the hour I lower my shoulders. My second coming, split screen, clouds like orchid bulbs in the throat. Other people's comfort keeps me up at night. Today, darling, I am rising from the lavender bathtub of self-loathing. I don't take drugs to shut up. I take off my pants when I get home and I stay there. Red cup full of cigarettes from heaven, ghosts of all my friends between my toes. I imagine them pouring vodka all over each other, wearing glitter. The vision is closing in like a tight dress. Meanwhile, the moon fills gray-green. The shops in the village are leaking bodies. Spilled oil rolls over cash like hands, some glorious bullshit. What bothers me is the weight of clouds under your fire escape. Your hand, strange lines I feel and can't. One shared breath of all the bulldogs in the park. How I don't notice an inch below something wriggling in dark warmth, as if love or hunger never counted and I was never meant to last. The nervous breakdown doesn't end. It was only sleeping and comes back good and rested, smearing its eye boogers all over, says, you're an arrogant prick. I say, fuck you, nervous breakdown. <laughs> it says, open the curtains and look down at all the people, or you may only share your bed with me. I accidentally say, okay. When I can't sleep, I smoke a dark cigarette and keep the curtains closed so I can lose track of where I am and who is here with me. I cut the faces out of magazines and pile them in the middle of my hardwood floor. In the distance, that good old rock and roll. This isn't simple if you want it to be. What my country does for me is enter me like a room. Becomes the furniture, the wall, the painting on the wall, the white spot where painting used to sing. Singing enters me, becomes the window. Baby, think of my skin as the best part of the song. Take me by the ribs and lay me at the bottom of a dirty creek where I can get a good view. I feel most colored, <coughs> sorry. I feel most colored when I'm thrown against a sharp white background, an elegy. Uh, and the title is from a artwork by Glenn Ligon, which is after a quote from Zora Neale Hurston. <laughs> I came after those two people. <laughs> or I feel sharp white. Or colored against. Or I am thrown. Or I am against. Or when white. Or I sharp. Or I color. Make it quiet. Wash me away. Forgetting. I feel most colored when I swear to God. I feel most colored when it is too late. My tongue is elegy. When I am captive, I am the color green because green is the color of power. I am a tree growing two fruits. I feel most colored when I am thrown against the sidewalk. It is the last time I feel colored. Stone is the name of the fruit. I am a man, I am a man, I am a woman, I am a man, I am a woman. I am protected and served. I pay taxes and I am a child and I grow into a bright fleshy fruit. White bites. I stay in the uniform. And I am thrown black typeface in a headline with no name, or no one hears me, or I am thrown a language bone unarmed. 
I feel most co colored when my weapon is, I feel most colored. When I get what I deserve, when I can't breathe, when on television I shuffle and widen my eyes, I feel most colored when I'm thrown against a mattress. My tits, my waist, my ankles, buried in veiny white, everyone claps. I feel most colored when I'm the punchline, when I'm the trigger. In the dawn of putrid yellow, I know what I am being told. I feel most colored when I am collecting dust, when I am impatient and sick, when they use us to distract us. My ears leak violet petals. I sharpen them. I sharpen them again. All right, I got two more situations. <laughs> Thanks for being here uh, and listening to me. Poem on Beyonce's birthday. Drinking cough syrup from a glass shaped like your body, I wish was mine, but as dark as something in my mind telling me I'm not woman enough for these days. Colored with reddish loathing, which feels to me more significant than sun. My existence keeps going, ripple in other people's mouths, pools of privilege and worship. I want, I keep thinking. I'm exclusively post everything. Animals licking my chin, new leaves stretching from a palm plant like a man's greedy arms. Today your open eyes are two fresh buds. Anything could be waiting. Please wait or there are more beautiful things than Beyonce. People get really like mad at me for this film. <laughs> it's, like, it's not like Beyonce is ugly. Like, obviously, I'm not saying that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's like, weird. <laughs> um, okay, please wait, or are there more beautiful things than Beyonce? <laughs> <laughs> Can you just, like, come on the road? <laughs> I like this. I'm theatrical by nature. Please wait to record Love Jones. 8.48 Saturday on BET until your life is no longer defined by Beyonce. Ants crawling over fallen leaves and little pieces of dog shit. Empty chicken boxes glowing with the remembrance of Greece. There are more beautiful things than Beyonce. Self-awareness. Leftover mascara in clumps. Recognizing a pattern. This is for all the grown women out there whose countries hate them and their brothers who carry knives in their purses down the street. Maybe they will not get out alive. Maybe they will turn into air or news or brown flower petals. There are more beautiful things than Beyonce. Lavender, education, becoming other people, the fucking sky. It's so overused because no one's sure of it. How it floats with flagrant privilege and feels it can ask any question. Every day, its ego gets bigger, and you let that happen. But one day, your shit will be unbelievably together. One day, you'll care a whole lot. You'll always take vitamins and exercise without bragging, and words will fit perfectly into your mouth like an olive soaked in gin. The glory of an olive soaked in gin and its smooth smallness. A gloss will snowfall onto your cheeks, the top of your lip. The sidewalks will be the same, evidenced. Combing your records, you'll see the past and think, okay, once I was a different kind of person. Thanks.
2007, and then the fandom intensified um, with his 2010 story collection, Asunder. But then things really got serious with Camby Belongo Mean River, his novel, 2009. Um, and I believe it was then when I wrote you a somewhat insane email, where, somewhat insane, right? Uh, where I asked about um, um, atmospheric emptiness and, and bogus scholarship and, and like, what the role of all of these things were in the novel, how essential they were. And Robert wrote back and he was like, mm, they're not so essential, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> which A, which A, I mean, I still kind of stand by that reading, so I think you should take another look at Cammy Blanco. B, I think, really points to something remarkable about um, Robert Lopez's work, which is that it can expand to take any shape, um, no matter how seemingly outlandish that shape might be. Um, and yeah, I would say that no one, except maybe maybe Samuel Beckett is a distant second, but really no one um, can say nothing and absolutely everything at the same time, the way Robert Lopez can. Um, and you are about to witness this uncanny ability of him collapsing everything into nothing um, when he reads from his newest collection. Uh, Good People, which is out now from Bellevue Literary Press. So you should get it. Um, short stories. He's reading the first one. And the great Robert Lopez. Thank you, Daniel. That was an excellent opening. I don't recall sending that email, but this is what happens when you write stuff and smarter people than you try to tell you about it, because it never, never occurs to me what's in here. I'm going to read uh, the first bit. It's called Family of Man on Isle of Wight from this book called Good People. This is going really well so far, and I'm, I'm sure I'm going to drive it right into the ground. <laughs> and how about David on the piano? He's killing it. Yeah, David. <laughs> Family of man on Isle of Wight. Let me understand something to you. If we could take a moment together, spare a little time reaching out as we catch up over coffee, because I know we're all busy. We have things to do. There's laundry, there's what to have for dinner, there's dental hygiene and all the rest. But for now, let me say this. Please, if I may, and then I'll let me go. I promise, you can hold it to me. You can trust me. You know you can trust me. Look at my face. Do you see what I mean by the look on my face? I know, because I will swear a blood oath if that's what you require. I want you to rest assured. I want you totally at ease. Listen, I am at ease and you know this. Everyone knows this. I aim to please and I'm only too happy. So if you insist, let's consider it a tontine. Yes, good, even if you don't know what that word means, because what's a definition anyway? I myself am not defined by words and neither are you. But believe me, it's a real word, tontine is. I heard it once on TV. An old man said it while weeping. A comrade had died in his arms in battle on the battlefield while the bombs were bursting above him. He was there alone and weeping, the dead comrade in his arms. It was all very moving, the naked emotion, the smoldering, wasted landscape. He, on his own, aggrieved, bereft. So you know he didn't make it up, not like that, under those circumstances. But the truth is the truth, and it is unavoidable. We can't put it off any longer. We need to face facts together, as a group, 
as a family, if you will, because we are a family, if you think about it. Even if you don't think about it, we are a family. Who says you have to think about it to make it so, to make a family? Families aren't ideas, and anyone who says so is a liar. Like my uncles, they were all of them liars. Every last one of them. None of them died on the battlefield like that, not like they said they did. Listen, I'm not trying to cast aspersions, be divisive. We are all family here. The family of man, the Isle of Wight. I don't know what that is, the Isle of Wight. Although I think it's Isle of Wight. I think it's spelled white instead of white. But I can't say for sure. I always thought of the family living on the Isle of Wight. And in my imagination, it looks like heaven, like the Garden of Eden. If there was a Garden of Eden, which there probably wasn't. But that doesn't matter because there's strength in numbers, and we have them. We have numbers. They can't take away our numbers. So here it is, the truth, unvarnished and naked and appalling. Here it is. Are you ready for it? I don't think you're ready. You don't look ready. You look unwell, if you ask me. You look peaked, worn out, frazzled. I'm worried. Have you seen a doctor? You should see a doctor. Make an appointment for tomorrow morning. Take a physical. It couldn't hurt. Change your diet maybe. Do some deep knee bends. Do some push-ups. Do something for God's sake. I mean, take a look at yourself. It's not pretty, is it? But what do I know? I don't know anything. That much is clear. Maybe after all that, you'll be ready. Maybe then I'll take one look and think, yes, you're ready. Because we have to be ready. This is war, after all. And we have to be ready for it. We have to be ready to charge onto the battlefield and lay down our lives. But what does it mean to be ready? How does one get themselves ready? Even if we are ready or even if we look ready, the truth is we are never ready. We're never ready for what's in store, for what comes next. Not out there on the battlefield alone and weeping. It's awful. So it doesn't matter that you're not ready because neither am I, and we have to move on. We have to let go. We can't let this stop us now. Nothing can stop us now. Not anymore. So here it is. At last here, moving forward and looking back. I haven't been nowhere in forever. There, I've said it, I'm not kidding, not even once, not even for a little while, not even as a break in the day, a brief respite from the grind, a fucking breather, I tell you. Not that I couldn't use a breather, because I can. I need a break. I'm being honest here. I'm not sure I could take it anymore. It's starting to get to me, the bombs bursting, the comrades dying in arms. I'm burning out, I'm winding down. It's all happening so fast and I can't keep up. Listen, I'm no different. I need a good night's sleep and three squares a day, a complete balanced diet, a rich interior life, someone to rub up against every so often, someone to bump into. But I don't have these things, I don't think. Not that I could remember anyway, not so you notice. The memory fades, it's true, like water down a fountain, like God on a battlefield. Take me, for example. I'm no different, not in height or weight or deportment, not in practice or habits. I spend most of my time seated, only stand when I have to, and register to vote, all the rest of it. I don't like going to the doctor. I want what most people want, dead or alive. I've seen it before more than once. Always an excellent example, they said. Everyone knows this. As a child, they held me up over their shoulders, the uncles and all them. They said so, but no one cared. Not back then, they didn't. Not those people, selfish and small and petty, living their everyday lives, no respite from the grind, no fucking breathers. What I'm saying is, put your uncle in the ambulance and carriage him away from here. Take him far from here and reevaluate yourself. Down to the river on the Isle of Wight to be baptized, to be cleansed. We all need to be cleansed, all of us, as often as possible, twice a day if necessary. Off, after all, we go to bed dirty and wake up that way. We need to come clean just once as a change of pace even. Do you feel what I'm saying? Is my implication translucent? Look at the uncles and all them on the battlefield laying waste, filthy, stained, years ago like this every day dying in each other's arms but not anymore not these days now they are old and they are sick and they are dying all alone by themselves and they have the scars to prove it the stench the death rattle can you hear it 
It's indisputable. They haven't been nowhere in forever either. Not them, not anymore, not for a long time now. At least they broke their backs for us. They laid down their lives for us. And what do we care? Do we care? We don't care. We don't fucking care at all. You want to know why? Want to know why we don't care at all? Me too. I want to know why too. I'm no different. I don't know why either. Want to know why I don't know why? Because who fucking cares? That's why. Let me understand something to you. I don't fucking care what it is anymore. It can be anything. Any blessed fucking thing on the battlefield or elsewhere. Because this is what happens. This is what we want. We want an understanding. Any kind of blessed understanding. It happens every day all over the godforsaken world. But not here it doesn't. It ha doesn't happen here, not in these parts. We've never had that good fortune, that sort of blind luck, that sort of unholy understanding. Not so you'd notice, but it doesn't matter. Not anymore because here we are together. After all, we still have each other, this beautiful group, this family, on the Isle of Wight, together, forever. Until death do we partake of each other, at last, for better and worse, for richer and poorer, in sickness and more sickness. That is, until we take our leave of each other, as civilized people do the world over, indeed over. It's harder now that it's over, but it is over. Make no mistake, anyone can see that. Even a doctor can see that. So now we can go because it's over. Clearly, please, let me say this. Be kind to each other. Be brief and be gone. You should go. I am going to. I will go first if that's what you want, if that will make it easier. Remember, I'm easy. I said so. You know I'm easy. I know you know I'm easy. Listen, maybe you don't want me to go. I understand I do. I know what it's like. I know what it's like to watch me go. But it's for the best, really. Trust me, I have to go. I have to. I can't stay here. Not like this, not anymore. Please don't make a scene. You're better than this, you're bigger than this. I'm going now, I am, it's true. Where am I going, you ask? You know where I'm going. You know damn well where I'm going and I know damn well that you know damn well where I'm going because I am already gone. In my mind, I'm gone already. I am gone though I am here. My body, my mind, still with you, still though gone, still moving to me, still together after all these years, but gone, always gone, and yet together still, a family of man on an isle of white. Thank you. There's Orchid Delirium, which was her first book, which was selected by Naomi Shihab Nye for the, for the Robert Dana Anhinger Prize for Poetry, and then The Last Usable Hour, um, Copper Canyon Press. And then the book that she's mainly going to be reading from, um, Uses of the Body, Copper Canyon Press, 2013. This is, I love this book. You should read this book as well. Um, and so Deborah has been, she's been a source of inspiration many levels for a while now, I'm not sure if she knows this. Um, and I think, I've been, trying, I've been thinking what it comes down to, and I think what it comes down to is that she refuses to ever let us take the easy way out. So, first of all, she won't let us buy into this like, boring old story that um, in order to satisfy nice, hefty, man-sized creative ambitions, you have to somehow keep your more feminine inclinations in check. She doesn't let us do that. Um, because far from hindering her creative ambitions, motherhood and, and pregnancy and birth have only furthered her art. Um, and then in her poetry, she won't let us get away with any false romanticism at all, or self-delusion. Um, she's a realist, and she, her poetry forces us to be realists, too. Um, so she makes us feel the little, the little pantomime, her, her words, um, that's at the core of our everyday. Um, and she won't let us fool ourselves into thinking that, you know, the various ways we distract ourselves and the things we fill our lives with 
um, no matter how compelling the distractions are or how um, pleasurable the distractions are, amount to much more than diddling away from death, also for words, I really like those. Um, and you may think that that sounds like a buzzkill, but <laughs> it's not. And that's what I like and admire the most about Deborah Lando is that that would be the lazy way out, but no. Instead, she takes this much more complex route and staggering route and makes it all laugh out loud funny. You can, you, can, you can actually confirm that I actually literally laugh out loud. I laugh audibly when I read <laughs> Deborah Landau's poems. Um, so despite their spareness and their sadness and their loneliness and their uncompromising realism, or actually really probably because of all of those things, they're also wry and flirtatious and dangerous and, and they have this mordant wit and this deadpan that is um, completely sui generis. So, that will end up. Thanks, Danielle. I really love your poems, too. She's a gorgeous poet. This is such a nice event. I'm really happy to be part of it. And thanks, David. What you're doing is really cool. Auspicious beginning for this new series. Solitaire. Oops. Try that again. Solitaire. One summer there was no girl left in me. It gradually became clear. It suddenly became. In the pool, I was more heavy than light, pockmarked and flabby in a floppy hat. What will my body be when parked all night in the earth? Midsummer. Breathe in, breathe out. I'm not on the oxygen tank. Twice a week we have sex. The live girls poolside, I see them at their weddings, I see them with babies, their hips thickening. I see them middle-aged. I can't see past the point where I am. Like you, I'm just passing through. I want to hold on a while. Don't want to not or forsake. Don't want to be laid gently or racked raw. If I retinol, if I marathon, if I vitamin C, if I crimson my lips and streakish my hair, if I wax, exfoliate, copulate beside the fish slicked sea, fill me I'm cold, fill me I'm halfway gone. Would you crush me in the stairwell? Could we just lie down? If the brakes don't work, if the pesticides won't wash off, if the seventh floor pushes a brick out the window and it lands on my head, if a tremor, menopause, cancer, ALS, these are the ABCs of my fear. The doctor says, I don't have a pill for that, dear. Well, what would be a cure-all, ladies? Gin and tonics on a summer night? See you in the immortalities. Oh, blurred. Oh, tumble rush of days we cannot catch. That was so eerie. It was kind of freaking me out. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, all right, so I'm going to read um, some excerpts from a long sequence of the book. And, um, I'll just pause between sections, um, so that's what I'll be doing, and then flipping pages, unfortunately. Okay. Mr. and Mrs. End of Suffering. The uses of the body are manifold, lips, fingers, the back of the neck. One should make as full a use as possible before time's up. In paradise, you should appreciate, don't squander. Take a deep, juicy bite, then swallow. Peaches are meant for tasting in paradise. We lay in many afternoons brought pleasure and relief. Men look at me like they have the thing I want. That somber, hungry force field smack on. It lies there. Is he aware? I cannot see where this will end. I can see where I need to go, but never get there. 
When I lie in bed, my limbs go numb. When the sky darkens, the urge is there, but also the mandate to tamp it down. Always the urge, always the mandate. You're still young, Paul says, but youth will burst all at once and be gone forever. The uses of the body are wake up. The uses of the body, illusion. The uses of the body, rinse, repeat, to make another body. September, draw the blanket up, lace your shoes, the major and minor passions, sunlight, hair. The basic pleasures, tomatoes, Keats, meeting a smart man for a drink. The uses of the body, it's only a small house. It gets older, it's upper and lower, it's red and white trim. It's tempting to gloss over this part, so you won't really see me. In my opinion, handsome Dr. Randy, you are brown-haired and Roman, swift with your hands. Babies are big this year, so way less smoking and drinking, so way more eating cheese. I have someone to give birth to, and he has all the credentials, heartbeat, feet. His father helped out. We decided to make him standing in the bathroom one night. We made him with things we had around the house. We made him with our own pots and pans. I still have the pantry, the pocket, the mandate. It looms there. A child. We set out and then he went out the right way, head first, and we made it to the clearing. We made it out, then he and I were in a blinking, in a fuzz down lair. The uses of the body, nursing, lightning, the clear warm sea. I don't cook, but I could make a baby. And he was warm and plump as pie. I dreamed him and there he was, miniature, vast, and unhygienic. He was my homework and I took him home. The baby was pathetic. All he could do was nod a blank cry and open his eyes. The two of us were nocturnal mostly. In exile, we regressed to a prostate prostrate luxury, <laughs> as if now would never be thirsty or die, not ever. And look at me, all my guilt peeling off. The uses of the body are heavy and light, bellinis, cradles, carousels, biopsies, sobriety, sensible shoes. I'm cozy, I'm full of want until chest pain, until a heavy cramp the pain of form. See how we caught up, see how caught up we are in our habitual flying patterns until we have to look the unfair doctor in the eye. The genitals are irrelevant then. Dr. Rakowski, what was it you said? Before you have kids, you get a dog. Then when you get a baby, you wait for the dog to die. When the dog dies, it's a relief. When your babies aren't babies, you want a dog again. <laughs> These sad things, they have to be. I go into the kitchen thinking to sweeten myself. Boiled eggs won't do a thing. Oysters, Lysol, peanut butter, gin. Big baby face getting fed. I am 20, I am 30. I am 40 years old. A friend said, listen, you have to try to calm down. At night, down the hall into the bedroom we go. In the morning we enter the kitchen, places please, on like this without alarm. I'm the talker and taker. He's the giver and the bedroom man. We're out of order, but not broken. He says, let's make this one short. She says, what do you mean? We set out and got nearer, along the way some loved ones died. Whole summers ruined that way. Take me to the door, take me in your arms. Mother's been dead a decade, but her voice comes back to me now and often. Life accumulates, a series of commas, first this, then that, then him, then here. A clump of matter, and here we are, minutes years. 
wait, I'm trying to establish something with these people, him, her, him. We make a little pantomime. Family, I say, wake up. The sentence is one, then another one in a line. And then we go on like that for a long time. I feel like I should be singing, but I don't sing. I can't help it. It's weird. We should, re we should rehearse this. Um, surprised. Okay. The city of Paris has you in mind tonight. Oh, wait, wait. What? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. That is cool. Okay. <laughs> The accordion. The city of Paris has you in mind tonight. <laughs> the city of Paris has you in mind tonight. Let its bridges lift you up. Let the city of Paris write you a letter. The men of Paris open their windows, tending their gardens of giant snapdragons. Let the city perceive you. It's infinite and slow. It will have you back. The beds of Paris are made for you. The city of Paris is sending you steak and water, wine and eggs. It has cafes for you, a broad, a broad flowing river and many cross breezes. When vaulting under, when the body has shown you its foul, airless destination, let the saint peace declare living and visible your clever spirit, your kindness, the tables of Paris will give you food. Here are some macarons, pink sweet with jam. How emptily the time goes. How rosé. You're not ready to say goodbye, but we'll be a ghost here. All over this city you can go to the movies. Can hurry, stop, buy a bunch of lavender, a book, pastry, be someone distinct, true, personal, and new. Thank you. That's it. Thank you.